you guys have been waiting quite a while for season three on a tier list and here i am today giving it to you pause join the party leave a like make sure to subscribe let's get it now just like the two prior seasons there are no D or F tiers. The episodes are heat and I'm willing to watch any of them. Even this one right here. Even though it does rank the lowest on this tier list, placing at 37. A lot of the episodes that have continuous moments and just oversaturated amounts of Patchy the Pirate or other are just something. Damn, those devil eggs look good, bro. It's just something I'm not too interested in. I want to see SpongeBob maybe a little bit of patchy monologuing or whatever here and there but not only is this episode like 80 percent patchy maybe like 65 percent minimum it's also just a whole bunch of spongebob being clowned on as he keeps trying to be narcissistic and think everything he does in his way is the way it should be so not only is he getting clowned on but he kind of deserves it low-key now coming in at number 36 is the spongebob squarepants lost episode which once again is just so much patchy more than the last one the only reason it's higher than the other one is because you do get a full length good episode that's basically uninterrupted in which the other one has many 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 moments of patchy this one is just patchy an entire fire episode and then patchy this spongebob was kind of integrated into like a two episode episode special kind of but just one it's the sponge who could fly he does a great job at it he's very passionate about wanting to fly and it is a funny episode with a lot of good moments especially with old man jenkins right there bro he looks like a shriveled up prune not only does spongebob get to fly and like live his dream but he also gets to be a hero in this and even though he was done dirty he tried his best to be helpful he tried his best to be a hero and oh that's all he wanted to do was help some people and then fly but people got too greedy okay this one might be a controversial one because a lot of people like this one and i do want to say if it wasn't for all of the patchy moments and the weird moments like this and stuff this episode would be s tier but when i was a child this one kind of gave me anxiety low key patrick that looked like it hurt bro all right, look what they do to poor Mr. Krabs. <laughs> this episode does have a lot of memes that come from it and a lot of funny moments, but it is a 23 minute episode. And if you clipped all the patchy and whatever moments from it that aren't like the episode, you'd get like a 14 minute episode. So half of this is just filler. And the last one on the C tier is the Krusty Krab training video. This one to people who may have not seen it a lot is probably A, B, S tier, something like that but when i was growing up this is an episode i would see so many times and i'd be looking forward to watching spongebob or something just to get hit with a non-episode like yeah it's funny yeah it's good but why did they play it so much however it is on top of the c tier since patrick is shook i think it's best we move on to b coming in at 33rd the first one on the b tier is my pretty seahorse this one just isn't as hype as the others it doesn't got a lot of lore a lot of reasoning behind it really but what spongebob episodes do i just think out of all the fireness that's in this season the funniest part to me is when he brings it to work and the whole dynamic between between that mr krabs getting angry over it the coin slot is a lot bruh in 30 second is mermaid man and barnacle boy four mermaid man and barnacle boy left behind toolkit or their magic belt or whatever that is the wombo and spongebob kind of goes around shrinking everyone and putting them in the jar which by the way did not age well this episode sometimes is just weird it is kind of funny though it has a lot of funny moments at 31 is the strangler or spongebob meets the strangler basically spongebob becomes a snitch he rats out out this dude for littering and it ends up being that he is a notorious murderer i know fire spongebob plot and now spongebob is afraid that he will get found and murked by the strangler so he hires a bodyguard 
who just ends up being the strangler. He keeps pissing the strangler off in a lot of hilarious fashions, in which I think is the sole reason this episode is where it's at and above the others. It's just cause it does have humor, especially with the cleats, bro. He was not prepared. The last one in the 30s at 30th is Snowball Effect. I believe for the first time or something, it starts snowing in Bikini Bottom, and everyone uses this to their advantage to have fun or like cause mayhem, skinive. Even Squidward like gets in on the fun. He builds a snowball fort trying to play, you know, a snowball fight, except he's way too good at it. So while everyone else is scared and hiding, Squidward is out here looking for people to murder. And this episode in general is very good, especially to watch near the holidays. I'd recommend everyone watch this one. It is pretty fun. I mean, look at SpongeBob and Patrick, bro. Look how comfy they are. That's a vibe right there coming in at 29 full of very funny moments is i had an accident the very favorable iconic funny moments is this in this episode kind of saves it because the plot by itself is a little bit weird and there's that moment with the gorilla but patrick and sandy carry this episode and that's mainly why i like it because it's not like super focused on spongebob yeah it's revolved around his issue but he's not the main punchline in this it's patrick and sandy who can forget the penny the tissue the potato chip and of course patrick throwing it back and then it just kind of ends off on a weird note with like a very poorly green screen cgi gorilla that for like literally no reason at the very end of the episode just hops on whatever animal that is i'm assuming a horse and you know it shows a family at the end and i agree 100 percent this is probably what everyone looks like watching this episode. Coming in at number 28 is Plankton's Army, which I can't even lie. This is like a really fire episode when it comes to meme status and like more on the advanced humor of things, if that's what you can even call it. Plankton decides it's a good idea to hire his family members to come like try and get the Krabby Patty formula from Mr. Krabs, only to be met with thousands of him to fight, which obviously obviously he can't do. And Mr. Krabs' way of getting rid of Plankton and his entire families to basically just scare them into thinking that the secret recipe is Plankton. And obviously after that, the rest of them follow along and the Krusty Krab is safe again. Mr. Krabs, you did it. It's a good episode. A lot of moments to laugh at. Just turn your brain off and watch. Number 27, SpongeBob was able to star into a commercial on the episode as seen on tv and spongebob's entire moment is just literally his chin and arm in a frame of the commercial he lets that get to his head and he starts thinking he's famous basically which leads up to like one of my favorite moments he starts singing about a striped sweater to this poor dude who just wants a sandwich which is very humorous or at least in my opinion then spongebob realizes if he wants to be famous all he has to do is grill patties because everyone Everyone loves him for that so basically spongebob left his job because he was famous and he found out it was for the best because he found what he was good at coming in at 26 is doing time this is the episode where because of spongebob mrs puff gets sent to prison and honestly this i thought was gonna be in like the s tier or something but this season just has so many fire ones i do really like this episode just because i think mrs puff enjoying jail more than being out there with spongebob is funny spongebob and patrick keep trying to break her out even though she doesn't want to be broke out the police and the guards just think she's crazy and spongebob or patrick are just a hallucination this entire scene right here however is trippy even as a child i was like bro they're doing too much in the animation studio way too much at number 25 and the last one on the b tier it is crabby land basically mr krabs he has a scheme, some Edit and Eddie Jawbreaker getting stuff. And he decides that the best advertisement for Krusty Krab is to build Krabby Land, which is basically just a lawsuit waiting to happen. In order to distract the kids, SpongeBob realizes that for some reason they like to see him get hurt. A bunch of evil brats. As the kids are waiting for Krabby the Clown, SpongeBob gets mauled and brutalized, only for SpongeBob and the rest of the kids to feel 
duped when they realized that all along the person they were looking forward to see was just Mr. Krabs' bitch ass. In which there's a very funny ending and also kinda justice as well. Mr. Krabs get jumped in his own parking lot and then forced to eat lima beans. I'm assuming one of the directors didn't like lima beans. Starting the B plus tier at number 24 we have Missing Identity. Missing Identity basically Spongebob loses his identity he has a very nostalgic noir moment in storytelling where he basically goes over his entire day and he has to keep reliving every moment in order to find his identity due to having a crusty crab inspection you know very soon which ends up leading to this episode being very not only funny but it's like just chock full of jokes they crammed as many as they could and i think every time you would watch this episode you'd probably laugh you'd be like oh yeah that's a fire episode of classic and it ended up spongebob the entire time he had his id his identity he was just wearing his pants slash shirt backwards and that is the episode where spongebob lost his identity squillium returns has to be one of my favorite like squidward episodes because it has a little bit of everything it has karma justice squidward getting his way and then squidward getting karma to his name mr crabs get karma basically squillium he flexes he shows off his gucci bucket hat squidward's press and squidward makes up a lie basically tells Telling Squilliam he owns the Krusty Krab and it's a famous fancy establishment. By the way, Smallest Violin, one of my favorite memes I use to this day. And not only does this episode have Squidward, Patrick, SpongeBob, and Mr. Krabs, which by the way is a fire lineup for an episode, but it has them all interacting and being funny. Eventually, they are able to figure it out. Squilliam is sat down, he enjoys a delicious meal in which everything goes right until spongebob decided to start tweaking he's fiending for i don't even know what kind of drug makes you do all this because this is just hostile grand theft auto trevor phillips behavior like that looks painful squidward gets busted pause and the entire like operation just goes to shambles and eventually squillium does find out hey but at least squidward got his fame rock a bye bye valve i know a lot of these episodes for a lot of people are all classics and goats and trust me they are to me as well an f tier in this season would be an s tier in any of the newer seasons basically spongebob and patrick find a little baby clam that needs help and they take on the role of its parents and by they i mean majorly spongebob as patrick is just kind of the deadbeat dad i kind of feel bad for spongebob in this episode low-key because yeah, it's like super funny with a lot of moments, but Patrick doesn't really get karma for being an asshole because Spongebob, he has to do a lot while Patrick literally just goes to work, which by the way, is just him going home to watch TV just so he can go back to Spongebob's home and watch TV even more, leaving Spongebob to deal with everything. But eventually they somehow get the clam through childhood in which obviously it appreciates Spongebob and it's able to hopefully live its happy life in Spongebob and Patrick. You know, I guess they had a happy ending until Patrick wanted another. Number 21 is Sponge Guard on duty. This is a certified classic. Everyone should know this one. Spongebob basically pretends to be a lifeguard. He mainly wants to do it for the clout, the attention, the fame, everything that comes with it. And so when Larry asks him if he's a lifeguard, he says yes. Now, this lie isn't so bad if it wasn't for the fact that Spongebob is lying about being able to save people in the water and he can't even swim and that eventually does bite him in the butt later at the cost of Patrick he tries to prevent everyone from swimming that way he wouldn't be exposed but exposure found him because he either has to let his best friend drown or tell everyone he's a fraud you can call Spongebob a fraud but you can't call him a bad friend damn Patrick and this is one of those episodes where at the end karma does its thing and Spongebob and Patrick 
does learn to swim. Number 20 is born again crabs. Due to them finding a very disgusting looking patty, a damn hockey puck, Mr. Crab tries it and well, oh, I'm fucking dying! The Flying Dutchman has decided that Mr. Krabs lived an extremely cheap life, way too selfish, and it is time for him to meet Davy Jones Locker. Mr. Krabs very pathetically begs for his life in exchange that Mr. Krabs will be generous and charitable, and he immediately fumbles that by accepting 62 cents for Spongebob's soul. This is on the top mainly because it's a lot of funny jokes. That's basically every Spongebob episode, but this one does different aspects of it. Like Spongebob is so annoying that not even the devil could stand him. And you know what? At the end, no one really minds and it is a happy ending. The last one before A tier, number 19, we have new student Starfish. Patrick decides to go with Spongebob to his boating school, decides to show him the ropes and we obviously know this is funny as hell because but like patrick has never even seen the inside of a school spongebob is obviously meat riding mrs puff and has like the teacher's pet status and then they learn about this episode's main plot relevance which is the egg now patrick messing with mrs puff has to be part of the reason why this is so far because the interactions between spongebob and patrick are hilarious 24 not 25 comes from this episode and don't even get me started on big fat meanie so after spongebob and patrick like start arguing and stuff you know basically fighting not being friends mrs puff decided that the best thing to do to make them friends again is to take care of the egg and through much adventure and help using teamwork spongebob and patrick were able to keep the egg alive and reunite their friendship with mrs puff watching the entire time they're both friends for once mrs puff is happy which is a very satisfying conclusion to see and there's a baby chicken as the green screen coming in at number 18 and the first one on the a tier is mermaid man and barnacle boy Four. This, in my opinion, is one of the better Mermaid Man and Barkle Boys. I do think this one has a lot of, like, chaotic moments and just frantic decisions. In a rush to escape SpongeBob, they forgot, specifically Mermaid Man, his belt. Spongebob, who gets a hold of this belt, realizes that it has powers and begins to shrink everything and then eventually poor Squidward as Squidward tried to blackmail him. Spongebob goes around the entire town terrorizing the Commonwealth in order to keep what he's done a secret due to him not wanting to disappoint Mermaid Man or Barnacle Boy. But little does he know, after realizing he caught his heroes, he decides that it is time to make things right and what he does and instead of like making them bigger he makes the town smaller which leads plankton to uh well he's about to murder everyone number 17 pranks a lot spongebob and patrick get a devious can of invisibility spray in which they decide the best stand of action is to just spray each other until they're completely invisible in which they decide to become ghosts and terrorize the town in what i consider a very very hilarious fashion one of the main reasons this episode is so high is because spongebob and patrick they don't care they being ruthless this episode terrorizing everyone and anyone anyone can get it and realistically that is what happens they terrorize surfers the common folks and just normal people leading them to be on the front page mr krabs however is not afraid of no ghosts he beat luigi's mansion blindfold speed running all it takes is a little bit of water for them to be exposed and mr krabs quickly calls up the entire town to publicly humiliate and embarrass them which is 100 percent the karma that was coming to them and they deserve this entire episode is very enjoyable i think there's a lot of good aspects about it that's why it's an a number 16 the algae's always greener this one i 
had to toss and turn a lot in my head just cause there's a whole bunch of different aspects to this episode. Mainly we get a POV of what if Plankton lived in Mr. Krabs life. Basically they freaky Friday. They switch bodies and after doing so Plankton soon realizes that Mr. Krabs life while it is vastly different he has his own issues and his own different set of problems. Not to mention he forgot Mr. Krabs had a whole ass daughter. Just the teardrops are the size of Plankton. We also get this funny scene where we get to see the Nasty Patty 2.0. Squidward. I mean you put Squidward behind the grill. What did you expect? This is probably one of the first episodes we get where it is fully dedicated to Plankton. And I think it's great. I think they used their time wisely. It was very funny. And the way they portrayed Mr. Krabs as the villain. Making Plankton realize just how kind of annoying he is. Basically, the shoe is on the other foot and he's taking them bitches off. He's going back to his Yeezys and his holographic meatloaf. And low-key, that shit kind of look good. Why does... Why does Holograph look good? Coming in at number 15 is The Bully. I love this episode. It's one of the more like unusual ones in terms of plot and stuff, but I love it all around because The Bully just wants to do nothing but beat SpongeBob's ass. Even going as far as like hiding in a toilet. And eventually he even tells Mrs. Puff, but Mrs. Puff immediately snitches, causing SpongeBob to have a full mental breakdown just scared of everything i know it's not really good to see spongebob scared but bro he is so hilarious in this episode all of this just to find out in the end that spongebob can't even feel it when he's punched which isn't true in later episodes but for this one he has plot armor and i love it all of this just to be immune and have a stronger intolerance than flats essentially he He's the first person ever to technically beat Flats in a fight. The ending is great. SpongeBob becomes the hero of the class and he saves the day on accident, but regardless he did. Clams. This obviously being a goaded episode, Mr. Krabs gets his millionth dollar and he decides to take out the boys on a fishing trip. And honestly, if it was like a day or maybe half a day, it would be fire. I'd go fishing with Mr. Krabs and Squidward. But eventually, with SpongeBob's careless and reckless behavior, he snatches Mr. Krabs' dollar and sends it overboard. As per the episode says, a big ass clam ends up eating the said dollar and Mr. Krabs is now on his revenge plot. He forces SpongeBob and Squidward to stay on the boat until he can retrieve his millionth dollar, lasting days and days. Obviously, they get sick and tired of this. They're very hungry, just like Gary. This is one of my favorite memes right here. And eventually, after they tried to escape, Mr. Krabs dumps out all of their food. And then even when that was not enough, he then just threatens to kill him and use them as bait. However, Mr. Krabs decides he just wants to take on the clam one-on-one, -on -one, in which, in a way, he got the dollar back, but at what cost? Number 13, and the last one on the A tier, is Club SpongeBob. This one had to be the top of A tier, because it does have, like, a lot of memes attached to it, and I definitely understand if this is, like, a lot of people's favorite episode. Has the magic conch, has the editing mistake with Squidward's hand. However, I agree this episode's fire. I'll always watch it. I just don't think it has a certain feel to be A plus or S tier. There needs to be a certain feel and this one almost gets it but just barely not. Congrats to Spongebob and Patrick for uh, the magic on. Coming in at number 12 and the first one at the A plus tier is One Crab's Trash. This episode is so good. Mr. Krabs obviously penny pincher has a bogus timu whack-ass garage sale he finds suckers in order to pause hold on pause let me restart it kyle edit that out <laughs> kakush get it out of here spongebob and patrick show up and obviously we know they're fools and what do schemers and scammers like mr krabs love they love fools patrick buys a plunger for three dollars i know those three dollars is money you borrowed patrick oh my god that's gross bro 
Anyway, SpongeBob finds a gem of an item. A corny pro bass fishing number one hat made from Dipper. Nah, but for real though, because of SpongeBob, this hat is kind of fresh right here. Not only do we get memes, but we get a whole bunch of like edgier scenes than we normally do, which I kind of love in SpongeBob. But then Mr. Krabs finds out the hat is worth a lot of money. So he tries a number of tactics to try and get it back from SpongeBob. SpongeBob eventually settling on scaring him with a grocery I, I mean he tries scaring him with a ghost and then he instructs SpongeBob to put the hat back where it belongs which is a random grave shout out this scene right here it's one of my favorites I feel you Squidward I feel you Mr. Krabs you know he is so cheap and money grubbly he decides it's enough money to defile a whole ass grave obviously the grave people didn't like that he gets attacked by the cemetery only to find out after all that trouble the hat is useless it was overmade, and spongebob got that drip drip coming in at number 11 is idiot box i think we all know why this is a plus this episode has everything going for it stupidity mindlessness a thousand real highlights low key and imagination spongebob and patrick basically play in a box where they are RPG, Dungeons and Dragons, Grottos and Gremlins, whatever you want to say, comment down if you know what Grottos and Gremlins is from, let me know. Squidward doesn't understand how they're having so much fun in a box. Also, I just want to shout out the whole scene where Squidward tries his best to watch TV, but it just ends up being nothing but box-related stuff. Even boxing, which I think is one of the best jokes in SpongeBob. Squidward has decided to steal the box, essentially, in the middle of the night. And he is gaslit to believe his imagination is going even though it's just him being thrown the fuck away. Hauled away into the night at the garbage dump. The top 10 Spongebob season 3 episode starting off with the great snail race. I honestly thought this one was gonna be a lot higher but then I watched all the season 3 episodes and I realized just how much fire there was in this season. It was almost like a struggle trying to decide what's better almost feel not fair squidward gets a new snail along with patrick even though his is just a rock and spongebob decides to become a very aggressive training coach towards gary trying to make him like bulk get all the muscle and become an olympian overnight which obviously gary can't do he wants to do nothing but run away and watch tv look at patrick's snail oh uh, you see spongebob with those blue striped adidas why are they kind of fresh though gary comes in second or third place but it doesn't matter he finds true love in squidward snail and patrick snail ends up being the entire winner and this episode is just great a whole bunch of good moments squidward you know losing to a rock is hilarious only downside was gary getting overworked which was sad but this episode definitely has a place in the top 10 spot congratulations tortellini now Number nine is wet painters. Pause. SpongeBob and Patrick are instructed to paint the entirety of Mr. Krabs' house without getting a single drop of paint on anything, or else he'll hang their booties on the wall like BDR. And Mr. Krabs has a lot of shit, bro. His garage sale could have popped off, but he was selling the wrong stuff. You already know SpongeBob and Patrick fumbled. What turns into a small mistake ends up being what could have been a huge disaster however the paint is apparently home seeking and it does a perfect job aside from one bit the tiniest little ant saliva drop on that dollar spongebob and patrick try everything they can to remove the smudge but eventually they decide to just try and hide it it doesn't work out mr krabs finds out and it turns out he was just pulling their leg all along the the paint is very easily washable. They might as well not even paint the damn house. And Mr. Krabs end up just 
dying of laughter so much that causes all of the beautiful paint to now be demolished. Coming in at number 8 and the last one on the A plus tier is Crab Board. Spongebob stays up late at night to watch a scary movie. Basically robots murk everyone and he goes into work the next day thinking that Mr. Krabs is a robot. So paranoia starts kicking in and Spongebob is fully convinced that he is a robot so he takes measures into his own hand. Him and Squidward decide that their approach is torture. So Mr. Krabs, even though he's innocent, he gets jumped tied up and then accused this almost feels like being accused you're a witch and one of the reasons i like this episode so much is because it takes a lot of intelligence blindness to not see mr krabs isn't a robot however they fully convinced he is and so they break his shit they beat and mug him all the while mr krabs was just in here chilling and for some reason like mr krabs never really gets done dirty it's always him kind of being the antagonist or the instigator and it's all fun and games until they realize mr krabs is not a robot we are at the top seven at the s tier you can't get higher than this it is can you spare a dime everyone should be able to understand exactly why this is s tier mr krabs realizes that there is a dime of his that has gone missing and he immediately targets it on squidward as the cult and obviously Squidward ain't gonna stand for any of that because why would he crash out over a dime? Squidward is way classier than stealing dimes. He'd be out here stealing hundreds, stealing bands. He ain't no after no dimes. And by crash out, I mean he really crashed out. This episode is almost a constant laugh the entire time. It's really goofy because Squidward forces SpongeBob to be his maid, which is some of the most hilarious parts in SpongeBob history. Get a job with the soup is s tier by itself all of that just for it to turn out that mr krabs had the dime the entire time number six is the camping episode i expected this one to be higher but this season is just full of fire patrick and spongebob decide to go out camping in their front yard backyard whatever squidward first he's hating and then he becomes jealous and decides he wants to camp out there with him half jealousy half wanting to prove them wrong and that it's easy and stuff we get the campfire song from this episode we get sea bear usually i want to hype squidward up and see him succeed but something about the sea bear beating his ass i don't know man that, that shit is hilarious to me squidward you better you better get off the screen boy uh who decided to animate spongebob teeth like that oh hillbilly crack pipe smoking at in the top five is midlife crustacean however it's bad so i can't cover it video wise this episode is so goaded though hilarious in every ways to the point they had to remove the mother from the show mr krabs trying to be hip again is hilarious him being like confused by back then's culture was hilarious the plot twist with mrs crab was weird hilarious and it's like bro this episode was fire definitely deserves top five coming in at number four is no weenies allowed sandy knows the best trap house on the block and spongebob thinks that just because he knows someone he can get in the house but he quickly finds out that is not how this works after being kicked out he has no choice but to go to the weenie hut jr where he gets advices from weenies he tries multiple ways to sneak in and it doesn't work until eventually Eventually, SpongeBob convinces Patrick to go on with his little scheme, and we get the hilarious scene where, like, Patrick is fighting himself but pretending SpongeBob is. Ugh. SpongeBob wins the quote-unquote fight. He is finally allowed in the trap house and threw up the wrong sign. The top three episodes of season three, Chocolate with Nuts, definitely deserves its spot. Most of us can recall this entire episode without even having to watch 
watch it. SpongeBob and Patrick fall for a pyramid scheme. A little scam, they buy chocolates, and then this dude right here, Schemer McBeanos, finagles them for all they're worth. And now they're out here losing dignity over some chocolate. All the while getting chased by a guy with very bad social skills. This part right here is amazing. You guys can hear this voice right now, and the audio is not even on. I quote this to this day. This is a quote I use a lot in life. You know, every day I break my arms, and then every night I break my legs. For some reason, that's hilarious to me. And eventually, the maniac who's been chasing them all this time was just dummy rich, dummy friendly, and he just wanted to simply buy all of their chocolate. Number two, just shy of first place, is just one buy. I knew you guys were expecting this to be in the top three. I just want to say, fat me as a child completely loved this scene watching the Herald. I have no idea why. It turns out that Squidward has never had a crammy panty. And Spongebob is on a mission to make him eat one. And eventually he is able to break Squidward's spirit and he tries this hilarious meme of a bite. He breaks character for one moment before deciding that apparently it tasted like dog doo doo. But as soon as Spongebob walks out the frame, Squidward can't help but he has an addiction now. That nasty ass salad right there with sand. Squidward can't help but to get his fix any way he can. He spirals so bad that he goes straight to the source. Spongebob catches him but the urge to eat meat for Squidward is just way too strong. And just like that, he spirals, he crashes out, eating everything in sight until it's this hilarious meme. It went straight to his thighs, thick as hell. And then his ass blew up. And the number one episode of this season is Nasty Patty. And honestly, this might be my favorite episode overall ever. SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs crash out crazy over some burgers and fries. Basically, a health slash food inspector is here to try out all of their delicious foods. And honestly, I don't even remember half of this BS being on the menu. Some of this looks delicious. He ends up loving the food, of course, because SpongeBob made it, right? However, due to a poorly timed news ad placement, they think he is a fake, and so they create this diabolical patty. How the hell a burger? got pimples on it. They give him the burger and while they look away they assume he eats it but he actually chokes on a fly and for some reason hearing him die and choke and literally get marked in front of them because of something they think they did by the way. That's what's so special about this episode. The creators didn't care. They were wanting them to crash out. They marked a fish. He went belly up. Look at him. But as soon as they think this guy is dead, you know, Sponge Bob freaks out, but Mr. Krabs almost like he's done this before says, hey boy, chill. We just got get we got get him in the trunk. I, I know what place we can bury him at. He said, don't worry, bro. Why did they bury him like that? That's a goofy way to bury someone. They have to lie and hide what they did from the police. The bro, he is dragging the body right in front of the cop car. That's crazy, SpongeBob. It turns out he's actually alive, but you know, the cops also try and mark him. Not even just one. Both of them gave him that word. SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs didn't even get manslaughter charges. They got away with everything and honestly good on them. Thank you guys so much for watching season three of me ranking every episode. It took so long. I have five different parts to this video, all like an hour long, including this one that I have to record. And now I got to edit. Should be done in about a month's time. If you are seeing this, it'll probably be a month from when I'm recording right now. You know, right now, now, recently the spongebob wendy's meal just came out i want to say flow that shit is ass and trash y'all disappointed as hell i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of mad at wendy's low key and this is coming from a dude who loves wendy i thought they have delicious food but the way they treating this it's basically just a meal if you don't get your little bitch ass on wendy i know you can do better mcdonald's would have tried something else you should have put some jelly on that burger call it a jellyfish you know some dr kelp instead you got some bitch ass square ass patties not even spongebob is square and his ass don't even use square patties fucking lame ass wendy's bitch ass letting me down and shit